Hello everyone, welcome to Frosty76201's G.I. Joe Review Channel. Haha, <laughs> just thought I'd throw that in for all y'all. Alright, here we have the Pursuit of Cobra Storm Shadow figure. Uh, we, uh, of course, are going to start with the card art, um, just so we can all take a look at it. It's very well done, very well drawn and painted. Uh, I'd like to point out, at least in my opinion, if you look at the eyes here, it almost looks like they're still using uh, Bian Hun Lee's card art from The Rise of Cobra. Uh, the mask is very similar, uh, but the eyes are kind of a dead giveaway that they modeled it after the actor from The Rise of Cobra movie. As you can see here, uh, he's got a Middle Eastern desert look for him, uh, which should be apparent since it is a desert battle uh, figure. Uh, just so you just so you know what it is, this Pursuit of Cobra is, um, they have four environmental themes. You have desert, arctic, urban, and jungle. So this place is, this is going to be one of the desert battle ones. Uh, as you can see on the Cobra figures, the, uh, the file card and the descriptions are all going to be in red. Uh, whereas on Joe, they would be in yellow. Uh, here we have the file card. It says, Storm Shadow is a ninja mercenary who works for Cobra. As the desert battle rages, he hunts for snake eyes, G.I. Joe ninja, and his swore enemy. Uh, the Cobra martial arts master is prepared to battle in samurai desert armor, armed with connectable katana swords and a Manriki Kusari chain weapon. Uh, I apologize if I mispronounced that. Uh, his mission equipment, hand-forged steel heirloom katana swords. Everything else about his identity is completely classified. Uh, however, we do know that his name is uh, Thomas Arashikage. So, we'll give that away anyway. So, ha! Take that, Hasbro. So, let's look at the figure itself. Um, it's actually, they're reusing an old mold and retooling some stuff. Um, the feet, the legs, um, you know, the upper and lower legs, that all comes from the Rise of Cobra Storm Shadow version one. The uh, bare uh, his uh, waist and bare upper uh, chest and uh, arms are all from that final battle uh, Storm Shadow that they released towards the end of the line. Uh, you might still see him clogging the pegs at uh, Walmart. But really, it's just a reuse of the quick kick. Uh, upper body uh, from the 25th anniversary. All they did was add this, add some scars in, um, which are still there. So I, uh, th you know, this isn't exactly a, a continuation from the movie, but you know, you're seeing some elements from the film make it into this toy line as well. The head is completely new, as well are all his accoutrements. Uh, this sash right here, that's new. Uh, so is. Uh, this little rag right there, I, I, I can't, I don't really know what, the, what it would be officially called, but that's all new. Everything else is just a reuse. Uh, because they're reusing mold, and it's not really even a repaint, it's just they added some brown to kind of give it like a dusty desert look to it. And I will let you see the figure up close now so you can see everything that I'm describing. There you go. I mean, it's a wonderful figure to begin with, and the articulation has always been fantastic, but it is a reuse, so in my eyes it kind of it loses points for being a reuse, but gains a lot thanks to the way that they were able to put it all together. Um, the articulation is, is basically the same. Um, angles can move up and down or pivot or rotate completely around. Double hinge knees. The waist piece does restrict um, outward movement, but not greatly. It's, it still does very well. And of course, he, uh, he's restricted right there, so he can't pull his legs all the way out or all the way back. So if you're intending on putting him in a vehicle, you might have to remove this waist piece first um, in some way. And it looks like you might be able to just push the dang thing down, but I'm not quite sure. I haven't found any uh, pegs or anywhere that you can just easily snap it on and off. But since I don't do that anyway, it's not really a big deal for me. And it's not like Hasbro won't throw out a thousand new short shadows. Also, I'd like to point out the uh, the throwing stars on the side. 
these are not only removable, but they're in the package, they are actually packaged loose, so you'd have to add them on yourself. But they just simply peg right on to the ear. So those are removable. Uh, the swords, all of them. Uh, he, he has six swords, uh, four for the backpack. These are not stationary, these are removable. You can pull out. And I'm going to demonstrate with these a cool little feature about these swords is that you can, there's a peg on the back of this one and a slot on the back of this one allowing you to connect the swords. So uh, if you remember that scene at the end of the, mil uh, end of the movie where uh, he did that and uh, used it almost like a, a bladed staff, it's a great little uh, homage to that. Uh, they are equal in length, however when they come packaged, the peg one goes on top and the unpegged, uh, the male one goes on top and the female one goes on bottom. Ha ha ha, sexual innuendos. It's funny. Uh, back to the articulation, he has elbows, can bend and rotate, wrists rotate 360 degrees, um, arms can move outwards and then rotate, so he can rotate at the shoulders and the elbows, and of course his ball socket head. And then of course the mid-torso articulation allowing him to turn, twist, and move side to side. Um, another cool little feature, and I'm going to show this, and you actually need two male swords to pull this little trick off. So we're going to grab one from here and one from here, because I just love the accessories this guy comes with. And he comes with this great chain. This is that uh, uh, Manrique Gusari uh, chain that was mentioned in the description. This one can peg right into there, just inserts right down and into this little peg hole right into the middle. Oh, a little trouble with that. There we go. So that becomes a, an extended handle with this bladed hilt. And the same for this side as well. It is a tight fit, which to me that's a good thing. Like that. So now you have this already deadly chain weapon now turned into a, a pair of kind of you know hyper ass you know nunchuck swords. You know, but it is called the Manrique Gusari. So it's very very neat, very very clever. Oh, you know it's a great use of the accessories, but. Even without the swords, it looks to be a very deadly weapon. Just peg these right back in. Oop. Come on. Get in there. Okay. Uh, also, the swords he is holding also have the pegs in them, so those can be combined as well. And these are actually a little bit shorter. The ones in his hands are a little bit shorter than the ones in his backpack. Um... He also comes, and these seem to be almost standard with uh, a lot of the Storm Shadow figures, is these kind of Wolverine looking claws. Uh, he can hold these in his hands. Um, and then as an actual you know, weapon used by uh, feudal era ninjas, uh, it was easily concealable and very deadly. So he's got throwing stars, claws, six different swords, the Manrique Gusari chain. I keep putting my hand in the way, I'm sorry. And that is, uh, you know, that looks to be like a die-cast metal chain, so it's not flimsy. It's like, you know, like, say, string would be. Um, it's not, like, super strong, so I wouldn't be, like, pulling tight on that if I were you. But it is, you know, more than a, a more than welcomed accessory. Uh, is, like I said, it's a reuse of the mold, of, of an old mold. But like I said, the, the accessories, the, you know, the way they, they designed the figure to look, I mean, he's got a great... Middle Eastern, almost Persian uh, appearance to him. Uh, so I think they pulled it up very well. It makes a great figure, uh, especially since in the first wave you have a desert uh, battle snake eyes as well. So uh, I would honestly give this figure six out of ten. Uh, just being, you know, it is a good figure. But since it is a reuse of a mold, I mean, the only thing they added really new to it was the accessories and a head. Um, so, but I mean, it, it's by no means a bad figure. It's just, you know, whenever they reuse a mold like that, I, I do deduct points. Um, 
not so much for like hodgepodge Joes, like, you know, uh, apart from here, apart from there, but it's basically a Storm Shadow that we already have. They just added new accessories and a new head. Um, but the paint is very well done, and it retails for roughly $6.97. I got them at Target this morning, uh, and they're available right now. This is the first wave of the Pursuit of Cobra line, this is the first official wave. Uh, these are not exclusives like uh, Spirit and Quick Kick are, so you can find them at Walmart, Target, Toys R Us, KB, you know, well, if KB Toys still exist, you might still be able to find them there. And your basic, you know, retailers everywhere. So thank you for watching. I hope you uh, all come back very soon. Thank you very much.